Uh, welcome to our Evergreen webinar on Africa. As I said earlier, my name is Liz Crowley and I am uh, lucky enough to be the product manager for Evergreen Africa and Australia as, as well. Um, but this afternoon we're going to talk you through our African program and uh, what uh, you might see if you were to come to Africa with us. It is um, one of the most amazing places I've been lucky enough to visit. It's the stuff that dreams are made of. It's the stuff of bucket lists in lots of ways. Um, those open, open, I suppose, animals running or freely wandering like a big open air zoo, um, the wide open spaces, um, the culture, the different tribes that you find across the country and the amazing food and wine. So it's a place that um, has a little bit of something for everybody. And I love starting with this quote from Ernest Hemingway who spent a bit of time down there who said, I never knew of a morning in Africa when I woke up that I was not happy. And certainly that was my experience, um, has been my experience during the time that um, I've been lucky enough to visit Africa as part for birth personal travel and I guess as part of this job. So what I'd like to do this afternoon is to take you through um, a little bit about the evergreen experience of Africa and what we do and how we do it um, as well as then uh, just the different programs that we have. Um, some of the things that are exclusive to us like your, the year invited options, the uh, discover more experiences where um, you have a, a chance to customise your tour so to speak. Um, our itineraries and then what discount offers we have available. So our brand new Africa brochure um, has been out for about a month now and uh, it has, uh, I guess, our, our touring program for 2018. So that's what I'd like to talk to you about. Some of you, I'm sure, may be familiar with Evergreen as um, a brand, uh, may hopefully travel with us before in, in different destinations. We have been um, discovering the world for over 37 years and uh, during that time we've won some awards from some different places for the work that we do. But what remains consistent and the same are the same five core values that are listed there on the screen. It's the quality of the experience, it's the value for your money, it's the service that we deliver, it's, it's an experience that will give you freedom to choose the things that you might lo like to do and then generally just ex the experience of travelling and discover these amazing places. Africa is um, somewhere that uh, is unlike anywhere else um, which I guess is is obvious it's it's when before I went there people said to me that there's something about Africa that gets into your soul and I didn't really believe them but now I do and having been there um, I do believe them for that reason I'm not sure if it's about if it happens when you see a giraffe for the very first time just walking across the road in front of you or whether you see the zebra just by the side of the vehicle uh, or the elephants coming down to the waterhole, um, it was things like that. But for, for me as well, it was seeing the different tribes and cultures that you've heard about, whether it's the Masai Mara or the Zulus or the Zosa tribes in South Africa, all of those just bring the whole experience that you have there to life. There is um, something about this Kenyan proverb which I I think is quite amazing that it comes from Kenya because it is traveling is learning and I don't know again whether it's as you're sitting in a safari land cruiser traveling the roads of Kenya that you're on a bitumen road um, in front of you but looking out to the left and right you see the laneways and the streets that have that haven't probably changed for thousands of years or hundreds of years where uh, there are no guttering they're dirt roads but yet people are talking on their mobile phones so it's that real blend of old and new um, that we find when we get a chance to go there what um, I guess as you, if you are considering Africa as a destination for your next holiday, there are lots of choices as to who you could go with and how you could do your touring. So what I want to talk to you about now a little bit is why choose Evergreen and what we do that we believe is a little bit different and a little bit um, that makes your holiday that much more relaxed and hopefully that much more memorable. One of the things that we uh, did again give you is that all of our all of our tours are escorted by a local tour director. So all of our tour directors in Africa are either, uh, are either South African for the South African section of our, tour, of our tours or in Zimbabwe, a local Zimbabwean guide will meet you or if you choose the, the tour that goes through to Kenya, you'll have Kenya guides when you meet there. So these people are incredibly proud of their country and happy to uh, show their country off to tourists. We include uh, all of the tipping and gratuitous so that's something you don't have to worry about once you're there 
and transfers to and from the airport. So when you land in, Johann in Cape Town or Johannesburg or Nairobi, there'll be someone waiting for you to take you to that airport. When we're putting together our programs, what we do is that we include the iconic experiences, the essential must-sees that you have when you're visiting a place. So, for example, on the slide you can see one of the must-sees for anybody at a, for a visit to Cape Town is, uh, is Table Mountain. So Table Mountain stands behind the city of Cape Town like a backdrop, um, this incredible what looks like a flat piece of rock that uh, dominates the city. From the top of Cable Mountain, it's 360 degree views down to the city below, out to the Atlantic, and uh, and down to the Cape of Good Hope, the southern part of the the uh, southern part of Africa. So that's one of the things that's included as part of your visit to uh, Cape Town as part of our tour. We take you down as well, down to the very southern point of Africa called the Cape of Good Hope. Um, and then on the way back from there, a chance to visit this little beach um, where the penguins live. So Boulders Beach is home to a penguin colony. And what I love about this, if uh, compared to any penguin colonies that I've ever found in Australia, is that the penguins are there all year round um, and they're there all day round. So you can be there at two o'clock in the afternoon and the penguins are just walking along a little street or walking, swimming out in front of you as you walk down on the walk to, to the beach. Um, so not like Phillip Island in Victoria or other places where you have to wait till uh, dusk for them to come out. These guys are there out in the open waddling around literally in their penguin suits. So that's something that we include for you. But we also don't want to include everything because people have different tastes and different choices. So for example, we, the afternoon in Cape Town on your days in Cape Town, the afternoons are free. So there's a chance there for you to customise the tour to do things that you might want to do. One of the places you could visit is this part of Cape Town called Bokarp, which is this beautiful, colourful buildings. Um, it's translated from Afrikaans, one of the national languages of Africa, to mean above the Cape. So Africa has a whole connection with the Dutch, um, and Afrikaans is a language that's very similar to Dutch that is, um, you know, a, most a lot of the population speak Afrikaans as their first language as opposed to English. From this particular little part of Cape Town called Burkab, it was where the Malay people, it was the Malay Quarter founded back in the 1760s. If you can remember back to your history lessons in primary school, a lot of the boats at the time sailed from Europe down around the bottom of the Cape of Good Hope and then up into what was called um, Indonesia or the Dutch East Indies looking for spices. It was one of those boats that uh, when it was blown off course that crashed into the side of Western Australia. Uh, I think it was William Dampier back in the day. So consequently the bottom of Africa, the bottom of South Africa has a real connection with those, um, with a lot of the Asian and Indian uh, countries and traditions because of these, these sailors from um, the 1700s. One of the things that we like to do at Evergreen is, is show you um, and take you to places that are really quintessential to the, to the destination that we're visiting. People absolutely primarily go to Africa for the animals and our first stop, one of our stops as we le have left um, the coast is out to a place called Addo Elephant National Park. It's the third largest national park in South Africa and this is your chance where you really will start to, an opportunity to start to see the animals. Yes, it's called Elephant National Park but you will see more than that there. The big five that everybody talk about that you want, um, I guess are on people's bucket lists are the lion, the buffalo, the rhino, the elephant and the leopard. And the leopard is probably the most elusive of that big five. They're the hardest to find, but the others, certainly elephants and buffalo you'll find relatively easily and rhinos in certain parts of the world. Lions can be a bit tricky sometimes, but um, a bit like the leopard. But my experience has been you will def you, the chances of you seeing them uh, are very, very high and we give you many opportunities for that to happen. So uh, throughout the tour, there's three or four different opportunities when we're in these game parks for you to see animals. And each game park has its own um, uh, not its own animals, but it's animals that are more frequented to that area, I suppose. You will even find in places that they have these little dung beetles moving the dung along. That was one of the one of my favourite little shots from a recent trip to Kenya. After you'd seen all these amazing massive animals, this little tiny dung beetle was rolling this dung along the side of the road that we stopped and took a photo of. So when we visit um, places like Addo Elephant National 
National Park. We stay in, um, we'll have a look at later. We also go and stay out in Cathedral Peak, which is part of the Drakensberg Ranges, and which is the, old, the highest mountains excuse me, in South Africa. If any of you were uh, watching I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here back earlier in the year, this is where that was filmed in this area um, of, uh, of, of South Africa. So it's one of, um, it's also known for it, a lot of it has a lot of um, uh, a cave painting on the, in, in the caves there as well. By far, of course, oh, um, the most famous of the national parks in South Africa is Kruger. And Kruger is on the uh, east coast of the country um, and we stay there for three nights. We stay at a hotel that's at the entrance to the gates where we have a chance to go and look for the animals. You can see in the slide at the back um, that's the type of vehicle we'll be in once we get into the national park. So we would go from a larger coach vehicle into these smaller open safari um, trucks as such or four-wheel drives uh, that all come with our, our own driver guides who this is what they do every day. They know where the animal, they're likely to know where the animals frequent. They're all on radio and talking to their colleagues. So if someone spotted a lion or someone spotted a leopard, then the, they are able to talk to each other to let each other know so that you also have that opportunity to see that because ultimately that's what we want to try and show you. Some of um, the places we stay like it, the Ele at Addo Elephant National Park as opposed to Kruger, we stay on what's called a private concession and a private concession is like um, an area of a national park that has been given to a private company where they're able to build accommodation and they're able to access that area for the animals that come. The animals come and go, there's no fences um, but on that certain part of the land or that certain concession, only people who are staying in, the in that part are able to access that land. So it just means we can get away from the crowds a little bit that you sometimes find in places like Kruger and the big national parks. One of the other special parts of Africa is, are its people, whether it's um, the South Africans playing uh, and entertaining us with music at, um, in Cape Town at the V&A Wharf, or whether it's the different tribes that um, you find in all parts. The Maasai Mara are probably one of the most famous groups of people and we will find, we will see them when we get to Kenya. They're from Kenya, um, they're normally in two parts of the country, uh, a, pl a place called Amboseli, which is to um, the south of the country near the Tanzanian border, and then obviously in the Maasai Mara. So there's an opportunity for us while we're visiting the Amboseli to go to a a Maasai Mara, a Maasai um, village and meet the, the chief and hear about their way of life. So again, it's um, showing and seeing the way that they've lived that hasn't really changed for hundreds of thousands of years. We also, when we're in Kenya, have a chance to see what's um, a, a completely different landscape from the, the dry savanna plains of the Maasai or the Mara rather, to places like Lake Navisha and Lake Nakuru. Now these soft, particularly those pink flamingos that you might have seen photos of, it's also often where you'll find rhino and buffalo. Um, so those, that's kind of the area when we're traveling through there that you um, will, will, that's where your chances of seeing those animals are, are very high. For me, one of um, the memorable experiences of my recent trip and what we want to show our guests like yourselves is Victoria Falls, one of the wonders of the world. Uh, the power of that water and the spray that flies up into your face just as you're walking along. Um, we give you raincoats as you as you go on your guided tour around the edge of the falls because the chances are you will get wet just from the the um, the spray up of the water and uh, I always loved it. I love the phrase because our guide said to us, you know, where else in the world would you be touched by a wonder of the world? So I think that's kind of what it quite a unique experience and our tour when we if you choose the tour that goes to Victoria Falls we come there from Johannesburg we do a guided tour of the falls before we go um, to a Zimbabwean village before we head across the border into Botswana which is where we stay for two nights um, so again quite close to Chobe National Park and more opportunity for us to find those animals that we want to see 
we uh, try where we can to choose scenically located hotels. So um, just a couple of examples of those on the next couple of slides. One of them is this place in Addo Elephant National Park. It's called the Kazuko Lodge. And as I mentioned, it's part of this private concession. So you can see they're really unique little kind of cabins um, that uh, you have with amazing outlook in front of you um, and, and at one with nature. When we're in places like uh, Cape Town, We've chosen um, a hotel called the Winchester Mansions. It's in the suburb of Cape Town called Seapoint, which is about five to a 10 minute drive away from the Victorian Albert um, Wharf, which is kind of the centerpiece of, of Cape Town. This is a family owned hotel and it literally is looking out onto the Atlantic Ocean. So that image that you're looking at now, I'd be standing in the water if I took that. Um, what I loved about this place was uh, the little touches that were a little bit quirky, things like uh, they've got a little container of cordial in your room so if you don't want to drink the water you can add that cordial to it just things that are a little bit different from your average hotel it also inside has a beautiful courtyard that has just this amazing display of bougainvillea growing down over the different balconies so we're there for three nights um, and it's easy access to whether it's just enjoying the views out the front or going back into the V&A to do some shopping we try where we can to include most of your meals South Africa um, particularly is really cheap compared to Australia uh, a meal um, for three people when I was there which was kind of a pizza and a bottle of wine and some water worked out at about $20 each in a place that was quite touristy so uh, we don't include every meal because we don't need to but we include them where you have no choice and the image that you can see now is from the Elephant Valley Lodge which is in uh, Botswana where we stay as part of that extension quite right very near Chobe National Park it is um, and obviously there there's no choice for where you can eat so we include the meal and uh, just as that elephant there is at the waterhole that's what happened during the dinner that I had there the elephants just wandered on up had a drink to water and then wandered away again so really quite a, a amazing backdrop for you um, one of the other highlight dinners that we give you a chance to try is what they call a boma dinner so a boma dinner is like um, a dinner that's outside under the stars but it's in this enclosure like you can see on the slide and the boma is a Swahili word which is what the um, Kenyan people speak um, meaning enclosure so that's uh, we do that for a couple there's a, a couple of opportunities um, throughout the tour where we give you a chance to have this boma dinner in uh, Africa in Africa or in South Africa instead of it's uh, it is often a barbecue but in Africa it would be called a braai that's what their word is for for Africa so again something that's a little bit different and very unique to the place that we are visiting if you want something that's, uh, I guess, a real treat at the end of the tour, and particularly I know, I'm sure some of you have traveled with Evergreen on our river cruises, the, we have an opportunity to cruise on board the Chobe Princess, which is like a, I guess a great, they're very well presented uh, and very comfortable, but you literally um, just float up and down the Chobe River with a chance to see um, these amazing animals that just come to the river to drink. My trip to Chobe, uh, I would have seen groups of minimum of 40 elephants several times, lots of rhino, uh, lots, we saw a little um, uh, baby, cub, baby lion cubs that were poking its head out from under their mum. Um, amazing bird life, uh, hippos, everything you could think of, we're all there. So for uh, a two night extension, you get to, um, if you're interested, there's an opportunity to cruise right on the river. Um, it's only a small boat, it's not as luxurious as our evergreen ships, but certainly um, the same kind of relaxed, uh, relaxed experience and, and a real treat for the end of the tour that you've had and that's available to us. There is um, something about Africa and where we go that gets into your heart, as I mentioned, and um, that's you know this proverb that the eye never forgets what a heart sees. So to try and help you show you something that's a little bit special and unique, we have set up the You're Invited program. And in Africa, we use these to show to you uh, some, some cultural experiences that you might not have always have, would have had the chance to see. One of those is a village to a visit to a Masai Mara village. The Masai Mara village um, is in Amboseli in Kenya and we go, we meet the chief, he tells us all about his life, we see um, how, what they, their, their, uh, 
homes I like, which are really mud mud cabinet mound ha mud um, mud cabins. I suppose not mud cap no not cabins. They're mud buildings. Um, it's an it's a quite a um, um, male dominated um, culture, I suppose, and and the. The chief's very comfortable explaining those stories to us and what they mean. So it's a real highlight for many of our guests to have that opportunity. We also go to visit um, in Zimbabwe, a local village there. It's called the Chino Timba Township. And we go to meet a family and we'll hear about their story and amazingly the differences from tribe to tribe and location to location. The other year invited experience is just out of Kruger National Park and it's a place called Elephant Whispers just at a little suburb called Hazy View and I guess this is really about second chances for elephants so it started with a couple who they found an elephant who had been sadly kept as a pet and been quite maltreated if he was released to the bush he would have died so they have cared for him and um, and others and I guess in the way have um, made them have gotten them used to people so we're able to touch them hear the story um, in a safe environment and let me tell you that skin's pretty tough um, and it has hairs on it which you never see I'd never seen before until I got close up with close up so when we get our feedback from our guests who travel they're the things that people talk about more than anything else I love when I'm in Africa one of the things that um, it tends to give me is is it without sounding weird it gives me space so in the world where we live in with lots of technology and phones and TVs and computers all of those things are there but when you're sitting on a four-wheel drive safari vehicle driving down the road looking out at scenes that haven't changed for hundreds of years there's something about the space that just gives you food for thought and time to think uh, you will be able to to touch base with family and friends in all of the places there's Wi-Fi and you can log on and show everybody your photos but tending that doesn't tend to happen along the long journeys so it's it happens when we're in camp or we're in the hotels at night so in between times there's these beautiful open spaces and one of the things that you might like to do if you can and if you are thinking of doing the Kenyan trip is the chance to go hot air ballooning there are a few activities that we don't include because not everybody wants to do it. They're also expensive, uh, and we know that um, you know not everyone wants to go and fall up in a hot air balloon. So it's something that if you do want to, we'll make sure we provide you with the opportunity to do it. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. So we call these uh, experiences Discover More. Um, so there are things that we can recommend and we can help you book, but you certainly don't have to do if you don't want to and you can just have an afternoon free. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's an opportunity when we're in Cape Town for several of these um, uh, Discover More activities for you, to, for you to do. One of them is to um, the Cape Town Winelands Tour. Just out of Cape Town is a place called Stellenbosch, which is the vineyard area or the winery area of Cape Town. They grow their, um, particularly a, a very light red wine called Pinotage. It's their area of specialties. Excuse me. Um, so there's a chance for you to go and do that for the afternoon. The other two options uh, while you are in Cape Town is either to go to Robben Island, which is where uh, Nelson Mandela was kept for 27 years when he was a prisoner for his efforts, um, his protests against the apartheid uh, way of life. So you have a chance to see where he's he stayed for all those years. There's also an opportunity to go to a township tour, which is um, a lot of the big uh, South African cities have the main part of town and then on the edges, they have these townships where predominantly the black people live. Um, and uh, there, I guess, are, are places of great hope where there's schools developing and jobs and opportunities, and we can go out and just see how um, the people are making, um, I guess, a difference to their, their lives by those opportunities that they've been given. So, quite an um, interesting, diff very diverse choices for you while you are in Cape Town. When we are in a place called Nysa, we also have an opportunity to uh, discover some things for ourselves. One of them is a visit to a place called Monkey Land, and uh, this is a little Madagascan lemur that's there. Um, there are lots of different 
varieties of primates at Monkey Land. It's um, and right next door is a place called Birds of Eden. So there's the Monkey Land Sanctuary, and then there's the Bird Sanctuary right next door. So that's one of your options. The other option, while you are in Nisa, is you might want to do a lagoon cruise. So Nisa is right on the coast. Um, it's right on where the um, the water and entry. Uh, uh, a harbour where the water comes in from the ocean so you, you can do a, a cruise on the harbour there at NYSA as well but or you can just choose to have a day to get to enjoy what's out there and what's around so what I'd like to do is just talk you through a couple of our itineraries now um, they kind of all build on each other quite simply um, and to give you an idea of where we go and what is a 16-day tour that we call the South African Explorer. They all start, it's, they start in Cape Town, all of our departures start in Cape Town with, uh, pr with the exception of the, the tour that goes to Kenya and for 16 days we travel as you can see on the map along the garden route up through Swaziland, Kruger and then back to, to Johannesburg. Um, this is a really extensive um, coverage of, of Africa. Our competitors um, certainly will offer you things like Port Elizabeth um, and Durban but they won't do that Cathedral Peak and Swaziland, they'll go straight to Kruger. So we want to show you um, uh, of the whole diversity that Africa has to offer. In Cape Town it's a three night stay when you start. One of those days is down to Cape Point as I mentioned earlier. Another one of those half days is to um, over to uh, uh, up the top of Table Mountain and then you have that afternoon for you to discover what you might want to do yourself. So we travel again, it's a two night stay so we're not rushing you before we go via Port Elizabeth up into Addo um, Elephant National Park. So this is really your first chance to see those animals that largely is why you've come to Africa. From Port Elizabeth we fly to Durban and uh, then in Durban we have a night. Durban is a beach, a beach city. Um, it's really the home to that Portuguese and Indian influence that you will find that if, that is part of the South African way of life. That's really very much where they were from. And from there up into the bush, up into Cathedral Peak, up to the Drakensberg Ranges, before we drop back down into Swaziland, which is like its own little kingdom within South Africa, before we stop into Kruger for three nights um, and have a chance just to see those animals again. Blyde River Canyon, which is the uh, South African equivalent of the Grand Canyon, before heading into Johannesburg where we where it finishes. So in 16 days and for um, you know just a bit over $6,000 you are able to really have a quite a comprehensive tour of Africa as part of that. If you wanted to um, you could add on from Johannesburg an extra two nights where we go up to Victoria Falls and then we stay in um, Botswana in that Ella Elephant Valley Lodge so it's right next to Chobe National Park um, and you have a chance then to do your game drives there. The game drives in Africa tend to work that you do them in the morning or in the afternoon. They normally, your day might start where it would start at 6 or 6.30, you'd, there'd be a cup of tea, the kettle would be on, you'd have, you had to have a cup of tea but then you'd go out on your game drive and then when you came back from the game drive after a couple of hours is when you'd have your full breakfast. Um, activities during the day and then again going out at kind of three or four o'clock in the afternoon for the game drive before finishing um, uh, at dark at just when the sun has set and back to the hotel, back to your property for your dinner. Um, and they all tend to follow that pattern whether it's at Addo Elephant National Park or whether it's at, Chris, at Kruger or whether it's at Chobe, uh, they all follow the same. One of the lovely parts about Chobe is that um, because it is um, the river goes runs right is a large part of the national park that the visit there we go on a cruise and the in uh, and watch these animals come down to the water to eat and drink um, which is which is fabulous as well if you are interested and do like that whole idea of river cruising this is um, where you can add on the the Chobe Princess, um, the two night cruise at the end so that would make it then a 20, night, 20 day tour from uh, Cape Town, um, you'd finish up there, you finish in Botswana and we would suggest you fly back from a place called Kasani which is the new Botswana airport just near Vic Falls border um, back into Joburg and home. We um, uh, tend to work very closely with South African Airlines, obviously the national airline of South Africa. They have the best access within the country um, in terms of getting their, their flight start um, are in, about, in and out of Perth. 
uh, and they code share with Virgin. Alternatively, Qantas also flies in and out of Johannesburg, um, but then you still need to switch onto a South African Airlines flight to go from Johannesburg to Cape Town. So we don't include the flights. Um, how you do it is completely up to you. We can certainly book them for you, but um, we find that people, um, particularly getting in and out of the country, have uh, their own choices. So that's why we, we we leave that for you to, to choose how you would like to um, a little bit more money. This is the ultimate Africa tour. So for 29 days, it's all that we talked about. Um, Cape Town through to Johannesburg, up to Victoria Falls and into Chobe for the two nights before coming back to Joburg and then flying up into Kenya. And in Kenya, you're met upon arrival at Nairobi, taken to the hotel, before you go down the next day to Amboseli National Park, which is right near the Tanzanian border. And that's where you will see Mount Kilimanjaro, the highest mountain in Africa um, that uh, you can access on a clear day, normally snow on the top, often clouds around. From there, it's up the middle to uh, Lake Nevisha, spotting completely different landscape before uh, the last stop, which is really the jewel in the crown of Kenya, and that's the Masai Mara um, National Reserve. So we have three nights there. If any of you saw the movie back in the day out of Africa, those a lot of those open spaces that they travelled in were filmed out of the Mara and it still looks like that today. If you have read or seen photos of what they call the Great Migration where you see those hundreds of wildebeest crossing the rivers going from um, the Serengeti National Park which is in, Tan in Tanzania right next to the National, um, right next to the Masai Mara National Park, that's, that's where that happens. It only happens in late July, August um, every year. It doesn't happen in other parts of the country and obviously the numbers are uh, not controlled by us but if you wanted to see that, you, it, it, that's where it happens and that's the part of the country that you have to go and visit. Um, in Kenya, our numbers tend to be smaller whereas in uh, South Africa you might have anywhere from 30 to 40 people on, on your in your group. Um, when you get into Vic Falls, it tends to come down to probably about 20, and then often up into Kenya, the same, a similar number, if not less. In uh, Kenya, we divide down into smaller vehicles, so groups of six. So if there's 12 of you, that'd be two, two vehicles traveling in convoy down the road. Um, and you'd stay in that vehicle both when you're on the, um, the highways, as well as in, your, in the national parks. So, it really is a comprehensive tour that covers some of the things you may have heard of and dreamt about. Africa for so many is a, a real bucket list um, experience. If you have travelled with Evergreen before, uh, you hopefully are aware of the Explorer Club that we have. So once you've done one tour, you're a part of it. The more tours you do, the more discounts, the more um, opportunities you have to travel again. As it says, travel has its rewards. So there's offers and savings that are exclusive to our Explorer menus, me, Explorer members rather. There are discount vouchers after you've done a holidays. There's discount vouchers for your friends and there's a magazine that comes out a few times a year with information on different destinations that we go to visit. The current one is actually um, all about Africa. So if you do uh, happen to, to be able to see it or you can see it online. So we always have special offers for you and we certainly have special offers um, today because you've uh, you've been a part of this. Uh, we Our new brochure came out um, about a month ago. It's got a beautiful um, bright orange cover with some beautiful zebras on, on front. And as part of that brochure launch, we have early birds um, that are still available for you if you are perch, if you are interested to uh, interested in travelling with us. So the current offer um, is up to $1,500 per couple, off, um, so $750 each. If you book by the 15th of December on our, uh, on some of our tours, that higher amount is off our 29-day tour. Depending on the shorter tours, the discount um, is a little bit less. But we have early birds available still on all of our departures. Yes, it's uh, sales have started, absolutely. Um, particularly in the months of July and August, we've had a lot of interest, but there certainly is availability still for anybody who is interested in going. Um, we also have uh, a special offer today because you have been a part of our audience, which we certainly appreciate you giving up your time and listening to me. So if you are um, thinking of booking, if you quote this code, um, you'll save an additional $200 per person on a tour that's 18 days or longer. So that code is EVIS602. 
So if you want to uh, scribble that down somewhere, um, or you can, I'll give you an email address in a moment, you can come back and ask us. But certainly if you listened, uh, certainly if you've been a part of this today, that will give you an extra $200 discount on top of the early birds that are all still available for you. So if you are um, really thinking about doing it, I, I can thoroughly recommend it. It's something that it's one of my most favourite experiences. I've been in travel now for 20 odd years. Um, used to be a teacher and started travelling and was lucky enough to get a job. And Africa um, certainly is one place that takes my breath away. So if you are keen to book, there's a few ways that you can do it. Um, we have some evergreen expert travel agents that um, we can point you in the right direction. We work very closely with Hello World or iTalk or just your local travel agency or alternatively booking directly with us, which is that number on the screen now, 1300 383 747 or booking through um, evergreentours.com.au. So there's lots of different ways for you to do it if you need more information or you just want to um, uh, see what availability or what the dates look like, that certainly is a possibility. We um, look forward to you coming on tour with us. I think um, if you are keen, I, it is an amazing place to go and visit. As I mentioned earlier, Evergreen has a really unique and special itinerary that has um, lots of stuff in it that other people don't have. You know, lots of people do Cape Town, lots of people do Neisner and fly across to Durban, but the majority of people then go straight up to Kruger and they miss that um, Drakensberg Ranges and Swaziland, which are, are quite unique to the part of the world. So we as well, of course, have uh, your invited experiences that I mentioned earlier. Um, the opportunity to do discover more, so you don't have to, but the opportunity to actually um, custom the customize the tour to suit what you might want to do, and as uh, as well, of course, our African itineraries that I said are great, and a little bit of an incentive financially to help you do it. Um, there's lots of availability, whether it's as I said, whether you choose to fly Qantas or South African Airlines, both are good good um, reputable air, airlines that will get you there safe and sound. Um, there is, uh, thank you so much for listening. If you do have questions that um, I haven't been able to answer um, because it's a little bit tricky when you're doing this, if you would like to send them through to this email address, we will, um, they'll either get forwarded on to me or one of our team will answer them. The email address is webinars at evergreentours.com.au. That's webinars, W-E-B-I-N-A-R-S at evergreentours.com.au. So if you do want to send those through, please do and we will get um, one of our team to reply to you as soon as they can. Thank you very much for your time. Hopefully um, it's helped you make some decisions and answered 